today we're going to be talking about the rationale method, which is the method that is used to calculate the amount of rainfall that runs off from any particular area. But first, I want to start off by showing you a sheet of plans or one sheet from a set of plans. And on this sheet, it is showing you the contours that exist in the area, but also, more importantly, it's showing you the direction in which rainfall would probably run off if there were any to occur. What you should notice is at the bottom here, there is a roadway that is proposed and I am now drawing that roadway or at least the location of that roadway using the purple marker here but as we know all along a roadway there's usually some drainage that can ex exist as well and so along this roadway we'll probably have some type of drainage or some type of drainage structure that will be able to capture all of the water that is running off from this location and other locations near it. What you have to notice is that the direction of rainfall runoff is not the same in every single location. And so therefore we have to make sure that we are calculating um, with respect to the watershed or the location that we care about. One particular item that we need to know is the time of concentration. And the time of concentration is basically the time it takes for one drop of water or a huge amount of water to get from the location where it began and all the way down to the drainage structure. The route can be very slow. Sometimes it can be very fast. It really all depends on what the water or that drop of water or that mass of water is traveling on. If it's traveling on grassy terrain then of course it'll take a much slower approach because it has to work its way through the grass. However, if it's traveling on something a lot smoother like asphalt or concrete it would occur a lot faster. So we have to take these two things into consideration when doing our calculations. For example, we cared about this area right here marked in purple and we also know that in this area we have apartment buildings we have parks and we also have a playground area now we know that the way that the water is going to run through this playground apartment and parks area it's going to be different so we have to take all these types of uh, surface areas into account when calculating how much water is going to flow from here into our drainage structure below require knowledge about the intensity of the rain that falls down in any one given area for instance take a look at this map it's the United States map of the United States that shows the intensity of the rainfall um, and how it changes throughout the entire country. So let's look at maybe Florida down here. If you've ever been in Florida anywhere down south, you know that when it rains, it pours. It's pretty, pretty bad. I mean, the sky turns black and looks like a bunch of demon lightning bolts just start flying. And we can kind of see that represented by this 2.2, uh, 2.0. This is the intensity. Now compare that to maybe the intensity of rainfall that happens maybe up in Seattle, Washington area. We only have about 0 0.4. Sure, it rains all the time, but it's more like a, a misty rain or something like that. And so we have to take that into consideration. One way that we do that is we look at the rainfall intensity curves, such as this one right here. And this rainfall intensity curve shows us the difference in rainfall by years or as we call them storm years so this first line right here is a five-year storm this is a 10-year storm 25 50 100 year storm so within a hundred years we would have 
witnessed at least one time a rainfall intensity equal to whatever is shown here that lines up with that 100 year curve. To get really precise, you can go to this site which shows us and what and, and uh, gives all types of information about the type of intensity that occurs for any given area, latitude, longitude. So here we're in Lexington, Virginia and let's just say for comparison's sake we're looking for the intensity for a 60 minute duration of rain um, within a 50 year period we may be given uh, an, an intensity anywhere from uh, 2.14 to 2.69 so 2.42 now we can compare that with a an evaluation of the rainfall intensity of a place further down south. Again, 60 minutes, 50 year storm, and look at that. It's a much higher intensity rate. So that just goes to show you that uh, rainfall does not occur in the same way, in the same form, everywhere, and that needs to be taken into consideration. Look at the example. And for this example, we're going to be using this equation which has Q is equal to the coefficient of runoff which changes by surface times the intensity, rainfall intensity, which changes by location as you just seen and also the area or represented in acreage. In this example what's given to you is 175 acres of urban drainage has the following makeup. 50% of it is made up of apartments, 20% is made up of playgrounds, and 30% is made up of parks. We know that the storm duration is about 1.5 hours and we are asked, asked to find the runoff flow in gallons per second for a 50-year storm. Some key things to keep in mind is first the equation, the flow, is equal to the coefficients times the acreage times the intensity. Also keep in mind what I have boxed in here in the red 7.3 gallons per foot cubed 43,500 roughly feet squared an acre which actually equates to about 1.008 cubic feet per second in an acre uh, inch per hour. And so if you're wondering how does this all convert over into feet cubed per second that's how it virtually kinda of just all washes out so to answer this question we could basically just add up all of the Q or the flows that we calculate and get the sum total to figure out what the runoff is that we need to accommodate using our drainage structures or we could do each one of them separately um, so what I elect to do is just place them all in one lump sum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Q for all of them and set it equal to what's in the parentheses here. And because I know that my intensity is going to be the same, I'm going to put my intensity on the outside and eventually calculate my total flow in feet cubed per second. So inside here is going to be my acreage for the apartment times the coefficient for the apartment plus the acreage for the playground times that coefficient plus the acreage times the coefficient for the park. Do it. The uh, apartment is within a 175 acre plot and the percentage of apartments that we said earlier was about 50 percent so I can just take that 175 multiply by 1.5 and then finally 
figure out what my coefficient is for the apartment. Plus the 175 multiplied by the percentage of that area that is taken up by the playground and that is about 20 percent as we said earlier times that coefficient for the playground and then finally plus the 175 times the 30 percent or 0 0.3 of the amount that's taken up by parks times whatever that coefficient is and now multiply all of that by my intensity okay, so I worked out the values and I found which ones I should place inside such as this coefficient here I found another coefficient for the parks and I found this last coefficient here for the playground uh, know that I kind of switched up the order here from the previous uh, area or line item and I also found the intensity here all of that equaled out to 159 feet cube per second which also translates to 1100 and 60.7 gallons per second. Now you may be wondering where I may have gotten some of these terms from so let me show you. Let's start off with the coefficients first. The coefficients that we found here, here, and here. Now the coefficients can be found in many different types of charts. This just happens to be one of the charts and tables that uh, is in the textbook that we're using. So from this table 16.2a uh, we were able to locate the runoff coefficients for the apartment dwellings and I just took the middle value and to give you a range here but just to make it simple I'll just take the middle value and we got a 0.64 apartment dwellings uh, parks we got a value of 0 0.175 and this playground was cut off but um, it was actually 0 0.3 and you can see here that it lined up to everything that is shown here for your intensity I went over to one of the many different types of intensity curves that can exist and again this one is in your textbook but as, it, as you can see here hopefully you see that there's a red line faint red line that is shown and we went for the 1.5 hours that's the storm duration that was in the given statement of the problem and we drew a line straight up to the hundred year mark that's this line up here so at the hundred year mark we stopped and then drew a straight line until we reached the end that gives us the rainfall intensity and that rainfall intensity yeah, I'm estimating about 2.2 .2. okay now I've shown you earlier that you can get the exact rainfall intensity from uh, websites but uh, I'm just using this graph for an example purpose uh, this one is for this 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 intensity curve is for the state of New Jersey of course if you're in a different location um, you'll have a different intensity curve but again just for the purpose of example uh, here we're going to be using this graph hopefully now you can see the process in using the rationale method to determine what the runoff should be the rainfall runoff uh, estimates would be for any given location for uh, with the apartments with playgrounds and with parks within the area that we are surveying and analyzing um, if you can remember back we had an apartment here I guess that's kind of hard to see apartments here we also had parks here and this little area represented our playground in this example but I wonder I wonder what would happen if 
we turned the playground, which was, I guess, mostly grass, the area, and paved over it with asphalt material. Do you think the runoff would be higher or lower? We have a faster rate, flow rate of water going into the storm drains or the drainage structures down here, or it would it actually be slower? Well, one quick and easy way, easy way to answer that question is just to look back at the coefficients. So if you look back at the coefficients and maybe try and find what the coefficient for an asphalt pavement may be, for instance, um, ah, take a look at this one down here. An asphalt pavement here, um, or concrete sheet of asphalt, can be anywhere from 0 0.8 to 0 0.9. So that means that the coefficient increased. It increased from a 0 0.175 middle, I'm sorry, 0 0.3 to somewhere 0 0.85 so that means instead of having a coefficient that has a 0 0.3 it would then change to a higher coefficient let's say a 0 0.85 which would produce a higher flow of runoff which means our drainage structure down here may need to increase due to the change in surface area or the type of surface that has been uh, paved over. So if there ever was a question, and I think these questions are coming up now, why is it that we are now having flooding problems in areas where we didn't have before? Why don't you just check and see how that area may have changed? Did it go from a less developed area to a more developed area with a lot of concrete and asphalt? And if so, that may answer your question. Because it's all about determining what one single drop of water would do, not only to the drainage structure, the roadway, but also how long it would take to get to that drainage structure and the roadway. And as transportation engineers, we care about that because we do not want water hitting our road. I hope that helped explain some things. Um, and that's it. Thank you.